Hello, brothers and sisters Christ. I thought I'd try out the stick that a brother in Christ, a brother gave me. Um, it's finally stopped raining. <laughs> Long enough for me to get out and walk a little bit. Oops. You got to turn the right way or it goes dark. So we're just going to do a little walk and talk, a little update on the ministry. Um, it's going to go dark every once in a while. <laughs> uh, so... The thing is, is I had my computer worked on for a while. I've, 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 we've been having a lot of storms around here. When I was eating breakfast this morning, I was like, hey, the sun came out a little bit. It might get bright enough for me to really do a good solid walk. And as soon as I got done eating and putting stuff away, I looked outside and it's all dark clouds again, like it's going to start raining again. So, <laughs> so that's just, that's what we're living with. Hardcore wind this winter. We've had rain before. We've had lots of rain during the winter, but this winter we've had a lot of wind. Let's see if I can get the right angle. And uh, so we've had a lot of wind, a lot of blowing stuff down. I don't know. I've had a lot of trees around here that are dying. Let's see if we can get that. Uh, there's just a few limbs there. I got small limbs here. A lot of the big trees have already fallen, or we fall them ourselves when they're going to be in the way of something. But every once in a while, there's limbs that'll fall off tall trees and uh, trees will fall over. I've lost power. So I um, had my computer worked on, so went a week or two without a computer. Uh, so I got the emails. Uh, we'll be doing a video on one of my e the emails a brother sent me to encourage me. And uh, we'll talk about that on the email video. But just to walk and talk how we're doing out here in the ministry. I'm going to try to get into doing some videos again um, and just continue serving the Lord. Okay, I just, I'm getting really frustrated with this world. I'm getting frustrated with the condition of the body of Christ today. And like I said before, one of the big, we can talk about it a little bit, one of the big things about the body of Christ that I'm noticing is, is a lot of people like to be verbal, but they don't like action. In other words, they like to be a verbal witness for Jesus Christ, but they don't want to be a living witness for Jesus Christ. Do as I, you ever remember that saying, do as I say, not as I do, you know, and that's the kind of attitude that I'm, I'm seeing in the body of Christ. A lot of people have the talk, the right talk. They can talk the talk, but they're not walking the walk themselves. And I've failed in this area too, and, and different parts of my life, my walk with the Lord and my trying to be a servant to the brethren. I've failed sometimes. And we need to get back to working really hard at walking, like we're doing right now, walking the walk. So here lately, it's just been a lot of storm, a lot of rain, been, been inside. Uh, this winter, it's, you know, like I said, I went through that depression for a few months. We did the video on it. If you want to watch it, go watch it. It's this I only am left. I, I only only am left. Uh, so we need to realize that we're not the only ones. It's a good study. Hopefully it encouraged the brethren. But brother and sister Christ, I just, like I said, I'm testing this out and I'm doing just a little walk and talk. We need to be more walk as much as we are talk. And someone once asked, how much uh, could you, like, they, like I'm overdoing it. I'm, I'm putting that book in too high of a level. The, the King James Bible. I'm putting God's Word in too high of a level. Can someone read the Bible too much? And my my thought on that is, it depends. <laughs> Got a car coming. That depends. Okay. Waiting for this car to come by. And please understand my answer. Please understand my answer. There's, I'll let it keep going. My first thought would be there's no no amount of reading the Bible is, de is bad. You need to read the Bible, read the Bible, I do. Start your day with the Word of God, end your day with the Word of God. Do Bible studies. I listen to Alexander Scorvey read the King James Bible. Okay. Forgive me if it's starting to shake because we're getting into our walk here a little bit, but this is supposed to help out a little bit with that, so we'll see. Um, let's see if I just didn't have this long enough. And I can rest my arm against my body, but it just feels like this feels like it's shaking still. I can see it on the camera, so please forgive me. I just was hoping this would help out, but please forgive me. I'll go slower. Um, but if you're not applying the Word of God, let's get back to the conversation. If you're not applying the Word of God, we'll stop for a second. 
you're not applying the Word of God in the life that you're living, I just don't know how, because I still believe that reading the Bible is not bad. Okay? A lot of lost people that do know the King James Bible, that can quote some of the verses from the King James Bible, that's going to, they're, they're going to, it's holding them accountable on the day of judgment. But when it comes to brethren, not reading the Bible is dangerous. So I don't want to ever say don't read the Bible or imply don't read the Bible. Not reading the Bible is dangerous. Memorizing scripture is important, very important. But if you're not taking the word of God and applying it, then it almost seems like a waste. It's not because you're going to be held accountable. Um, my life, all my mistakes, all the problems, uh, failures I've done, I'm going to be held accountable to that at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? The life I've lived as a Christian, I'm going to be accountable for. And I just... Uh, where am I going with this? <laughs> uh, read your Bibles, but live it. Okay, can you read too much Bible? You have some lost people that read the Bible. If you're here's it is, if you're not living the Bible, then you read in the Bible, you read in the Bible, you're no different than a lost person reading the King James Bible. You're no different. If you're not hiding it in your heart and living it, thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Okay. Uh, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You preach the word. Okay. But if all you're doing is reading the Bible and you're not actually living it, you're not applying it in your you're not hiding it in your heart and living it, you're no different than the lost world. You're no different than a lost person opening the King James Bible every morning and reading a little bit. Treating it like a like it's a novel and just reading it a little bit. You're no different. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be new creatures in Christ Jesus our Lord, brother says Christ. And we need to get back to living that life of Christ. Okay? And that's what I'm trying to do every day. There's days I fail, there's days I give in depression. There's days where I just want to give up. Not give up like everything, just give up trying to, you know, the fight the good fight. In my life, I continue fighting the good fight, but I'm talking about for the brethren and when it comes to the world, the, the ministry of reconciliation, there's times where I'm like, they just don't want it and I just want to give up. We're not to give up. We're going to continue being a living witness along with a verbal witness. So reading the Bible is great. But you can know what to say by reading the Bible. You can have someone say the right things when they read the Bible. But are they living it? And like I said, getting back to our conversation, which started way back up there. What's hurting the body of Christ today? We're being all talk and not much walk. Everybody online, that's why I'm getting burnt out online. I'm just really getting burnt out online. I want physical fellowship. I want to preach the Word of God to people face to face. I want to hear good preaching face to face. I'm tired of the internet because the internet, all it seems to be on in the internet is talk, 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 talk. You don't see me walk. You don't see my walk. You don't see the other men out there trying to preach the Word. You don't see their walk. And it's just like, it's just all talk. It could be, it could be truth that's being talked about, preaching of truth. It could be lies. It could be deception. But it's still, in the end, it's all talk if you're not taking those things and applying them to your life. And I'm really, really trying to, I got encouraged, like I said, we'll do an email. I got an email encouraged that some of the preaching that God has blessed me with, not to preach, but preaching, teaching the Word of God Bible studies. Um, I'm not a bishop, I'm not a deacon, I'm not a pastor. I just, I love the Word of God and I like sharing the Word of God with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Got another car coming by. Bye. FedEx. The, uh, my brother said, I'm, I'm not that, I just do Bible studies. And when people, when I get letters in the mail, in the P.O. box, or emails of brethren that say, hey, you taught this, and it really got me to start doing this better, or I pray, I'm praying more, or I'm reading the Bible more, I'm studying more, I'm hiding it in my heart, and I'm living it more. And when I hear these stories, it really encourages, it should be the number one encouragement for men in ministry. I'm not here to talk just to talk. I know we're doing a walk and talk, but I'm not here to just talk. 
I'm not. I'm here to see, to try to help the brethren, and I I really am grateful for the help from the brethren. So, brothers and Christ, the action's what matters. The walk is what matters, not the talk. And just that's why I'm getting burnt out, brothers and sisters. Christ, that's why I'm getting burnt out on the internet. Because I got a lot of people on there that are fake and false, and they're and I've got brethren on there that I, I believe are saved, good and true. They line up with the Bible and their talk, but I have no clue what's really going on in your actual lives, your day to day walk with the Lord. I can only pray. I can only like when God puts a burden on my heart to hey do this study or do that study and pray that it's actually helping you guys with your walk as it's helping me with my walk. But. I said, just, aren't you, well, let me ask the brethren, it's just a walk and talk, aren't you getting tired of the internet? Aren't you getting tired? I know some people, they don't, they're not tired, they love online Christianity, because online Christianity, it goes back to what I was saying, it's all talk, 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 that's all it is, there's no actual, you know, accountability there's no seeing the walk that you're walking you can hide the life that you're living on the internet and they love their internet christianity but those of us who are struggling with the flesh fighting the flesh trying to do what's right trying to live right trying to love our brothers sisters in christ and everything aren't you tired of the internet aren't you tired of all the wolves in sheep's clothing coming in pretending hey i'm one of you and then they cause division and sow seeds of division are you tired of brethren falling away because there's no real accountability online there's no accountability to help brethren get back to a standing position sin comes in feminism comes in worldliness comes in one of the dogs down there worldliness comes in and it's like it starts to take over where are the brethren holding each other accountable Seriously holding each other accountable. Where's the actual consequences in the body of Christ? This is a whole study we did way back when, talking about, you know, when someone's in sin and wickedness, if they're struggling with the flesh and they're giving it up and then they, they choose to get back into it and then they give it up and that you can see that struggle and you can see that heartfelt sorrow that I really don't want this, but I'm struggling with the flesh. You have grace for that brother or sister in Christ and you help them out as best you can. And the number one way is through the scriptures. Take God's word, hide it in your heart, memorize it, hide it in your heart, and live it. Make sure you're living a good life. Yes. But brother says Christ, just accountability, just getting tired of online. And I'm still not going to give up on the brethren. I'm going to still put out some Bible studies. But I'm not doing much, you know, socializing, because that's mainly what it is these days. In the comment section, um, I got my emails. I need to still respond to brethren on the emails and get back to doing that. I miss face-to-face -face fellowship whether it's Skyping brethren or actually going for a walk like this without any cameras or anything and just walking with some of the brethren and just talking. Just go for a walk and talk about the Lord, about His Word, about our struggles in the world, uh, how bad the world's getting, our vexation, and then encouraging each other through the Word of God saying, hey, God's in charge. Everything we see going on out there today, the talks about a civil war, then there's World War Three. then there's talks about a civil war, then there's talks about this, the you know, pandemic. Then there's talk about this, and then there's talk about that. And it's all fear mongering, fear mongering, fear mongering. I'm gonna go try to end this little quick walk and talk. So it wasn't supposed to be 15 minutes, but brothers of Christ, they're doing a lot of fear mongering. No matter what's going on out in the world, our, the mission doesn't change. Living for Jesus Christ doesn't get put on hold. It doesn't get put to the side because of how bad things are getting out there. We're supposed to be living for Jesus Christ even more. We're supposed to be a greater light for Jesus with the life we're living in our stands to this dark world. Okay? We're supposed to trust God that He knows what He's doing. Trust Jesus Christ. Do you trust Jesus Christ? I'm not saying you can't prep a little bit. I'm not saying that you can't, you know, protect yourself. What I'm saying, though, is, is how is that different from any other day? You should be doing that all the time. I've always pushed this, even before bad times happen, you should always have a little bit of a habit of prepping a little bit where you're learning to can food and jar food, grow food, you know, go to the farmer's markets and you can get can, uh, jar, uh, I call it canning, but it's jarring. They have jarred vegetables and stuff like that that's really healthy, healthier than the canned stuff. But if you got canned stuff, you got canned stuff. But 
Brother Sister Christ, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just something we do on a daily day basis to begin with. I'm not preparing for the end of the world. I'm not preparing for a civil war. I'm not preparing for a World War III. I'm just living my life every year like we're supposed to for the Lord as best that I can. Okay, and I prepare for at least a year. And I've got jar, I, I think I got enough tuna, jar tuna, to last the next three years. And I've got jarred uh, bear, last time we did bear, um, I got with the neighbor, we did a bear. We have, I have enough jar bear meat to last me two or three years. I've got uh, elk, I've been, I've been doing a little trading with some of the neighbors and got some elk meat meat in a jar. I've still got some frozen, but I'm learning that the best thing to do is the frozen's okay, but it, it's a lot harder work. It's a lot harder work doing the jarring than it is just packing the meat up and freezing it. Um, but it's more worth it doing the jarring. Oh, and it turned off again. So I'm just going to lock it in place here. And I'll try to hold it steady for this last little bit. So like I said, this was a test run to see how well this works. It's going for a little bit and then it quits. It goes for <laughs> and then it quits. But mainly this stick doesn't look like it's keeping it from shaking as much as it's just supposed to keep the camera level. So it looks more smooth and you're walking. So your walking doesn't cause it to sway left and right. So it was a test. But but this is Christ. I, I have nothing wrong with prepping anything, but like I said, number one, we need to be living examples as well as verbal examples. Something we need to work on, okay? Living a life of Christ. I keep pushing this. Starting your day with the Word of God is, is important. Ending your day with the Word of God is important. Starting your day with prayer, ending your day with prayer. Talking to God all day about things. You're in the middle of doing some work. Take some time to talk to the Lord as you're doing the work. Okay? We need to pray without ceasing, as the Bible says. That's very important. We need to take what God shows us through the scriptures, through brethren doing good Bible studies, uh, through our own Bible reading and Bible studies, and we need to take those, put them in our heart, and we need to live them. Apply them to your life. And the second advice I would give in this walk and talk is trust the Lord. Everything we see going on out in the world, trust the Lord. I remember a brother in Christ once said, uh, before he started getting so distracted by the world and getting into worldliness, he used to say that, and I, believe, I agree with this with the Bible, that God's in charge, okay? The enemy can't do nothing to us without God's permission. You remember the story of uh, um, Job, okay? Satan needed God's permission to do anything to Job. When you belong to God, you're part of, I know back at Job's before the Jewish people, I know he's before the body of Christ, but when he said, this is a righteous man, and God's like, I love this man, I, I, I'm going to help I take care of this man. He's doing right. He's right in my heart. He's got a place in my heart, in other words. Um, You've got to trust God. Satan needs God's permission to do anything to Bible-believing, God-fearing Christians, brethren. And I know some brethren out there will say, well, what about this? What about that? You can open the door for Satan and let him in. I know brethren who have done that. But if you're living right and you're doing right, okay, Nothing can happen to you without God's permission. Okay. Will God allow things to happen? Yeah. But do you trust God in it? When we go through bad times, hard times, do you trust God? And it looks like in the next year, there's no telling what's going to happen in the next year. Could we go through some hard times? Some serious, serious hard times. Let's see if I can go this way. It's the horse ranch. We're going to go through some serious, serious hard times. Yeah. Now, I'm just showing a little bit of the uh, mountainside. Remember what I said in that last uh, Bible study we did? is like get out in nature and spend some time with the Lord. And talking with the Lord, walk and talk with the Lord. Have cue cards, memory cards that have um, scripture. Right? And start reading the scriptures. And then as you're walking, talk with the Lord about them. How to apply them to your life. What they mean and what not. Okay? But brothers, this Christ and this walk and talk. Just remember, trust the Lord. And make sure you're being a living example, a living example. Not just a verbal witness, but a living witness for Jesus Christ. Okay, this has been a little test. We've had some difficulties. Uh, Brothers of Christ, I just want you to know I love my Brothers of Christ. We're going to try to do more of these walk and talks if we can, as the weather permits. 
and I'm going to try to keep them down to 15 minutes. So this is going on 21 minutes, but we'll be cutting some of the stuff out of here. But brothers is Christ, once again, I know it's like I'm repeating myself because sometimes my eyes, I want to make sure I get this point across, even though I got it across several times. But one last time, okay, for me. Um, not just to be a verbal witness, but a living witness. And in these last days, trust God. I think those are the two things that are really weakening the body of Christ. We're not just being, a lot of people are talk, 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 and not walking, the walk. And the other thing that's getting in these last days is a lot of people are not really trusting Jesus Christ. They're starting to get fear-mongered by the world. I know brethren in ministry that are becoming talk shows and talking about what's going on in the world, the world, the world, the world. I know some brethren that were would have been good uh, uh, Bible teachers, you know, and Instead, they decide to go off and do ministries that have to do with news ministries and worldly ministries, worldliness, and they're not really trusting God, and they're starting to promote fear, and the brethren are getting scared. What do we do? What do we do? Keep living for Jesus Christ. Remember that no matter what physically changes, like let's say you have to move, you have to move here, you have to move there, you have to start changing this a little bit. Just remember that the mission doesn't change. We're to live for Jesus Christ every day. We're supposed to be preaching the gospel whenever the doors are open. Gospel tracting. But the best witness we can have today is being a living witness for Jesus Christ. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.